This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God. Read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 2, this is Section 3 Immortality. Friend, A question came to my mind before when you were saying that the body is not immortal but the ego would love to have me believe that it could be. And there is the belief that the body can be immortal. I can remember believing this and I can remember being very excited about the whole idea. It seemed very logical to me when I learned that it is only the mind's belief that the body is not immortal that would make it die. David Well, if we really look at it, we see that the ego is for something that is nothing. It has the illusion of being very ingenious and that is certainly the experience in the world. It seems to have made up a giant cosmos apart from spirit and apart from abstract union. And it seems to have great diversity and variety. There seem to be many different skills, many choices and menus to pick from. In the sense of projection, Now, as part of it, we have televisions and camcorders and VCRs. This is like making movies within movies. The movie of the world is one movie. And within that, we have another projection. The fragmentation continues into seemingly smaller pieces. But the one thing that the ego has tried to come up with for an answer for heaven is the idea of immortality. It never has and never will be able to mimic or create immortality. Immortality is an attribute of God of creation and the ego is a defense against that. It is literally a puff of nothingness that did not come from God and that is not immortal. The ego seemed to have a beginning and it will seem to have an end. But this is all within the fabric or the framework of the dream. The ego has never been able to come up with or attain immortality. But that does not stop it from at least having the idea of immortality. The idea that the body can be made to live forever. Once again, the body is form. Form and spirit have no reconciliation. They have no meeting point. One spirit exists and form and time and space do not exist. Friend, the very nature of form is that it is finite, not eternal. It cannot, therefore, be immortal. David, it has boundaries. Every form has boundaries and limits. God and creation do not. Friend, At that time I heard about someone in India who seemed to be proof of the fact that the body is immortal. 
It seemed that he would be around for periods of time and then he would dematerialize and not be around for periods of time. And then he would rematerialize and stay for a while and dematerialize. That seemed to be proof that you do not have to die, that the body can be immortal if it is held in the mind in that way. David, just to perceive a body or a vision, though, gets back to perception. This can be a symbol, for many, a very comforting symbol. It can be a teaching symbol, that the thoughts of those who have completely laid aside the body are always available to the deceived mind as part of help. And their vision may appear from time to time, if that may be helpful. If this is something that the Holy Spirit can reach the mind with. These are nothing more than symbols. Seeing the Virgin Mary is an example of a vision that can be helpful. But they are still perceptions. Friend, so you are saying that it is still perceptual, that it is still unreal, but it is helpful and it is reaching the mind where it is? David, yes, the error would be to make the connection that you were making, that it seems to have been around for a long time, and so it seems to be immortal. Once again, knowledge of the kingdom of heaven is purely abstract. It is light. Not light like the body's eyes see, but light in the sense of understanding and wisdom. Darkness is a metaphor for ignorance, for blockage or unawareness of that light. This knowledge and the kingdom are abstract. Any kind of perception, however pure and however stabilized the perception becomes, is still not the abstract kingdom. It is still perceptual and temporary and will not last.